Okay, so we're going to be continuing with our book today. Obviously, last time um, we found that they found little baby sloth, which they saved from the vultures in the tree, and they called it Abacaxi, which meant uh, pineapple in Portuguese, um, and back of the short. Okay, the monkeys and the bees, this chapter is called. Jungles, Fred found, were full of corners and crannies. They held secrets, but the secrets emerged in the most unexpected ways. They would never, he thought, have found the scrap of paper that changed everything if it hadn't been for the joint efforts of the monkeys and the ants and the bees. Max saw them first, later that afternoon. He'd been lying on his back staring at the sky while Lilo and Con and Fred sat by the fire, sat by the fire and tried to make a plan. The problem was, despite being told very firmly to stay put, Max kept trying to explore, and he was a small, five-year-old in a very large jungle. How sure are you that the raft will hold? Leela asked. Fred considered the raft was wild, wide and strong, and the vines were wrapped so thickly, so secure, it that so, so thickly to secure it that the raft was more green than brown. It looked like a rectangle of floating of a floating cricket, pit, cricket pitch. But he thought the pilot had presumably been just as certain about the plane. Medium sure, he saw Con's face. High medium? And walking would take weeks. We know Manus is on the Amazon, so if we sail down the river, we should reach it. Max approached and sat on Leela's feet, tugging at her sock. Leela! He dug a chunk of snot from his nose and wiped it on the grass. Except we don't know if Manus is up river or down the river from here, do we? So we have a 50% chance of death. Leela, said Max, listen to me. But there's a 50% chance of life, said Fred. Con smirk, and he resisted the urge to flick Max's snot at her. Can you hear me? She said. Do you know how insane that sounds? Leela, Max tugged harder at her sock. Did you see, did you see how the monkeys fought the bees? What do you mean? asked Leela. Back had taken up position, draped across one of her shoulders, back legs hooked around her armpit. But uh, he looked, Fred thought, like an epaulet, epaulets on his father's, oh, oh sorry, like the epaulets on his father's old army uniform. The monkeys won, said Max. I followed them. What? What are you talking about, Max? Leela picked him up and held his face close to hers, blazingly angry. I thought you were in the den. You are not allowed to move. I have told you that over and over again. If I can't trust you, I'm going to tie you to me. Max pouted. I didn't go far. I stayed away because I don't like bees. Maxie, don't lie. There are no bees. I've seen every flying thing, ants and beetles and mosquitoes, but no bees. It was over there, said Max. He pointed to the other side of the clearing among tall rubber trees. In the high bits. Leela raised her eyebrows over Max's head. Was it a dream, Max, or was it in real life? Real life, said Max. I don't believe you. Real life, Max looked furious. The monkeys washed their hands in the ants and they then fought in then fought the bees. I have no idea what you're trying. I have no idea what you're trying to describe," said Con. "But it sounds terrifying." Max got up, roared, and stamped, accidentally stepping on Connie's knuckles. Con gave a yell and slapped at his ankles. "Ouch! That hurt," she said. "Don't hit him," said Leela. "You're not paying attention, any of you. Listen," said Max. Fred looked at Max. The boy's eyes were unhappy and a little wild. We are listening, Max, he said. No, come. Max ha took hold of Con's hand and pulled her up and towards the trees, his small feet thumping determinedly into the earth. Con looked surprised, but let herself be led, jogging beside him. She, couldn't, she didn't comment on the state of Max's hand, which was sticky and with an unknown substance. Fred and Leela ran after them. There, said Max. They were there. He pointed up at an ant nest, a great bulbous structure built on the tree's trunk, bulging out of it like a potbelly. There were no monkeys in sight. They were really, they were here really soon ago. They'll come back, said Max. Skeptically, Fred sat down. 
Max sat on Leela's legs, and Becca clung to Leela's shirt. Sitting on the empty hand, sitting sitting still and empty-handed was not, Fred found, an easy thing to do. The things he was trying so hard not to think about, his father's face, his mother's voice, came crowded in. And darker things, the picture of the four of them starving, unfound in the green clearing, crept towards him. He tried to whistle, but his head swam, and he succeeded only in making a peculiar piping noise. Fred, whispered Leela. You'll scare the monkeys. And then suddenly the monkeys came. There were three of them, dark brown and strong-limbed and sweet-faced. Fred watched in awe as they chased one another up and down the trees, chittering. They whir whirly-giggled around the trees, flicking their tails, and then the largest of the monkeys, a mother with a baby hanging around her neck, laid her paws on the ant nest. The ants swarmed over the monkey's paws and up her arms into her fur, and, and lay there. Then fast before the ants could bite, the monkey rubbed her paws together. Con touched Fred's leaves. Is she killing the ants? Fred watched the monkey lower her nose to her paws and sniff deeply. It is like perfume, he said. Suddenly, all three monkeys, as if at a signal, turned and leapt away across the trees. Let's follow them, said Leela. It isn't easy to keep pace with monkeys if you don't happen to be one yourself, and if you haven't eaten properly for days. They were all four, they were all four weak, and Leela's hands were shaking. Con turned pale as they jogged after the monkeys' disappearing backs. The monkeys leapt into the branches of the great spreading, of the great spreading rubber trees and halted. Bees said, Max in a self-satisfied voice. I told you. Far above their heads, so far it was blurred from distance, was a beehive. It was enormous, encased in a grey layer of resin, and the buzzing was astonishingly loud. Honey ran down the side of the tree. Leela's eyes widened. She held back her more tightly. They don't attack sloths, do they? As they watched, the mother monkey approached the hive, broke open the protective layer, and plunged her paws into its depths. She broke off a piece of honeycomb and bit into it, dripping honey on her baby's head. The bees swarmed furiously, but didn't go close enough to sting. Leela's eyes were wide as the sun. I think the smell of, on the paws meant that the bees didn't attack. She said, it must be like a repellent. Let's try, said Fred. But what if it only works for monkeys, said Com. Well, there's only one way to find out. He thought of dinner, which would be pineapples, if there were any left, and cocoa grubs, if there weren't any. Wouldn't you like some honey? Just think, for a minute, before you... But Fred was already running. He wound his way back into the ant's nest and waited, panting, for the others to catch up. Then he laid his hands on it, on its side. The ants, the ants swarmed onto his fingers and knuckles and wrists. It was like wearing a pair of black gloves. Ha <laughs> they tickle, he said. The ants were so small, it was like being covered in full stops. Now, you rub your hands, odd Max, quick, quickly, like the monkeys. A few of the ants swarmed up Fred's arms, all the way up to his chin, but they didn't seem d disposed to bite. He rubbed his hands together, feeling a little guilty, and then sniffed. The smell was so strong that he gagged. You know, when they put stuff on cuts on school... At school, it's like that. Disinfectant, said Leela. He rubbed his hands over his face as he'd never had he'd seen the monkeys do, and up his arms. He hesitated and then gathered more ants and rubbed the smell onto his legs and ankles too, just in case. Con pulled his hand down from her down to her face as she could sniff. It smells like ammonia, like my ants smelling salts. They ran back to the honey tree, and Fred thought the others seemed to be giving him a wider berth than usual. You smell like a bad idea. Like medicine, said Max. At the front of the tree, Fred looked up. The trunk was enormous, and the bees a distant cloud. Are you sure you don't want to stop to think for just a single second, to at least make a plan, said Com. I'll be fine, said Fred. He'd always loved climbing trees, that feeling of navigating an unknown land upwards. The others watched him, Leela with expectant eyes, Con with one eyebrow and her upper lid raised, Max with his fingers in his nose. 
He seized a low branch and heaved himself up. Max cheered. Fred's leg legs scrambled, scrambled up for purchase. And then he found a knot in the back and pushed upwards. He felt immediately that he, this was different. This was nothing like climbing at home. His muscles were weak and less at his com command. His arms and legs had less pull and spring to them. It occurred to him with a jolt that he hadn't checked to see if the tree's wood was rotten. The tree creaked under him, loud as the hinge on a giant's gate. Damn, he whispered very quietly. He reached up the next branch and then the next, his shoes slipping and sliding on the smoothness of the bark. Oh, for goodness sake, he heard Conseil. He's going to get himself killed. He'll be all right, said Leela. Really? What if he's not? It'll be even harder stuck in this place with just us three. Please come down, Fred. Please just come down. Fred ignored her. He swung higher and faster. He set both feet on a thick branch and looked above the head for a good hold all. Hand hold, sorry. Suddenly, the branch under his feet snapped. His legs failed in the air, kicking against the trunk of the tree and he swung from his hands, feeling his fingers slip against a slick surface. He scrabbled with his right hand to reach another branch his legs blindly seeking a foothold. His feet met solid wood again, finally. He tried to pull up to the next handhold, but his arms felt hollow, no, no more use than wool or straw. He stood on a knot in the trunk, clutching to the branch above his head, frozen. He tried not to think of what his father would, be, would look like if he heard that he had, his son had died climbing a tree. Look at him, said Combelo, he's stuck. Are you all right, called Leela? He's obviously not, said Con. I'm not going to stand here and watch him die. She stomped to the base of the tree, her shoulders hu hu hunched around her ears, and began to haul herself up. Her jaw locked like a boxer's. She moved swift, stiffly, but steadily, despite the shaking in her hands and knees. Fred watched as she came to rest a, a few branches below him, staring up, hugging the tree to her chest. Her ankles were wobbling with fear. What are you doing? He asked through gritted teeth. Telling you to come down. No, said Fred. I'm going up. Fine, then I'm coming up too. Why? You look stuck. I'm not. But he knew he wasn't sure. It had no fe he had no feeling in his arms. He looked down at Con. Her face was bloodless, so white it was almost blue, but full of determination. He tried to arrange his expression into e easy curiosity. Even if I were, how would you be able to help? I'll go ahead, she said, and test the branches. If you have another scare like that, I bet you'd just fall and die. I wasn't scared, said Fred. The words were out of mouth before he could stop them. Yes, you were, said Con, facing up at the tree. And so am I. So are they. She moved ahead. She went far more slowly than he would have and her face was set with an expression that looked like fury. But she climbed steadily, testing each branch with her feet and wiping her hands on her skirt at every move. Fred unpeeled one hand from the branch. He pushed back at the angry opera of fear. He followed Com. Gradually, as Fred climbed, the sway and rhythm of it took over and his breathing returned to normal. The hive came into sight. There were hundreds, perhaps even thousands of buzzing insects. Bees don't have encouraging faces, do they? said Con. Her fo voice was much higher than usual. Do it quickly so we can go down. Just a second, Fred crouched on the branch, his legs shaking a little, and stuffed leaves into his nostrils so that the bees couldn't sting up his nose. Don't come too close or you'll get stung. From far down below, he heard Leela call encouraging, encouragingly, You can do it! Max unencouragingly shouted, but also, if you both fall, would you be angry if we ate you? Fred stood, wrapping one arm around a thick branch to the right of him. With the other, he reached up and left, and over the vast drop, and pushed his hand into the fist-sized hole in the beehive that the monkey had made. The buzzing grew louder and more, more furious. Fred braced himself. The bees swarmed angrily around him, and a few rebounded off his shorts, but not a single bee touched his skin. Triumphantly, he broke, out, he broke off a fistful of honeycomb, and then another. 
It works, Fred said. A bee buzzed into his mouth. He spat it out as soon as he did it, jerking his head, and felt the tree sway under him. Where do we put it? asked Con. We could drop the chunks of honeycomb down to Leela, but they might get stuck in the leaves. If all of this is for, was for nothing, Con began. No, no, I've got an idea. He braced himself and looped one arm around a branch. With his free hand, he tucked his shirt into his shorts, then dropped the honeycomb inside his T-shirt. At front, he licked his fingers. Ah, he said. He'd forgotten that they were covered in dust from the bark and the remnants of the ants. But even so, the honey was spectacular. It made his skin buzz. Can I have some? asked Con. I thought you wanted to get down. She was shaking so hard her knees were jumping, but she lifted her chin defiantly. If you can, I can. It was just as Fred edged around the great trunk of the tree towards her that he saw it. Something red the size of an apple, tied tightly with vines to the branch. His breath stopped. He leant backwards to see better. Fred, said Con, don't. I'm fine, he grabbed. Uh, he, I'm fine. He grabbed a handful of tree branch. Look above your head. That red thing wasn't a plant. It didn't have the thing, the tinge of life to it. What is it? The leaves are in the way. She squinted upwards. I think it's leather, like a handbag. No, something else. He edged around her and upwards. He unwound the thing from the tree as quickly as he could, his hands shaking. The branch he was on was broad and he sat down on it, his legs hanging on either side. Con approached and sat facing him, hugging the trunk with her sh with one shaking arm. Don't open it now, she said. Wait until we're on the ground, you idiot. Just quickly, said Fred. It was a leather pouch with a leather drawstring and the remnants of gold embossed writing on the base. It was heavy. His hands were shaking as he opened it and pulled a lump of out a lump of metal. A tobacco tin, he said. It was rusty, but less rusty than the sardine tin. Let me see, said Con. There were words on the side. She whispered them out loud. Collier's finest tobacco, London, Piccadilly. There's something else, he said. The tree rocked suddenly in the wind and the thing slipped through his fingers. He caught it just in time, though. It was also rusty and through his fingers. Oh, it's a pen knife, he said. Is that everything? I think so. He brushed away a stray bee and upturned the pouch over his palm. A piece of paper fell out. What's that? said Con. A letter. It was a sheet of paper from the blank end pages of a book, marked in ink and labelled with neat block capitals. In the corner was a stretch of points of a compass. It's a map, he said. Goosebumps rose on his arms. Fred knew the power of maps. They gestured to ha hidden things. They were line drawings of the world's secrets. He studied it. It was sketched in ink, which had faded in the creases of the, of the paper. There were thin lines for tributaries and a thick one for what he assumed would be the Amazon. In the far right hand corner, there was an X. It had been scratched so fiercely the pen had pierced the paper. What do you think that is? What's the X stand for? Con's eyes were wide. She seemed to have forgotten they were 30 metres up in the sky. I don't know. Fred looked upwards. The tree they were sitting in was taller than the others surrounding it. Near the top, top where, where it thinned to a spike, it stood high above most of the rest of the canopy. I'm going further up, he said. If I can get above the canopy, I might be able to see. No, you're not. That would be insane. You're just showing off now because you're embarrassed you got scared before. Fred felt his ears grow up red. I'm going. Do you want to go back down or are you coming with me? Con pulled the corners of her mouth towards her chin. I'm coming too, obviously. They went slowly, testing each branch as they got thinner and thinner. The branches became springy and fork handle thin. Suddenly, Fred's heart broke out from under a leafy branch and he found himself head and shoulders above the canopy. Below him, the river stretched purple and silver. Fred tried to keep his breathing steady. It was exactly as he dreamt it, from his seat on the floor in the corner of the library. Look, he said. I am looking, said Con. She was just below him. Her eyes were screwed shut. The river wound for miles around bends and swoops, disappearing into the horizon near the front of a mountain. 
As he watched, a monkey skittled down from a tree and leapt away, curling its tail around the branches as it swung past him. Open your eyes, Con, open your eyes, Con said Fred. You have to see this. Con opened her eyes and then opened them further, as wide as the sky. I didn't know. It's bit your, f bite your fist beautiful. It looked, Fred thought, like someone had designed it with a purpose in mind. Someone who wanted the world to be as wild and green and alive as possible. Very slowly, he let go of the tree with one hand. Fear rose up in his mouth, but he reached into his pocket. He unfolded the paper. It felt like a small green miracle. The map matched exactly what he saw. It might almost have been drawn from precisely this position, or one very close. He peered down at the map. That's us, he whispered. And that bend, that's the place where we moored, said Com. There, where ink curves, intricately sketched, that matched exactly, or almost exactly, the world below them. Where's the X? said Com. Fred shielded his eyes. That way, but I can't see anything. The horizon was a green smudge. He couldn't see where the river wound. We should mark where we are on the map, said Con. You are a you are here position. Fred looked down at his hands. The cuts on his knuckles from the crash were just beginning to heal. He bit the scab off one and then squeezed out a drop of blood and put a, re a spot of red on the map to mark where they were. Ugh, that's disgusting. But a good idea, said Com. Fred grinned. Let's go down, he said. There's honey for lunch. He swung down from the tree faster than he than he should have. A lot of the skin got left on a knot of bark halfway, and he got poked in the eye by a branch. Con followed more slowly, whispering instructions to herself. Honey was seeping through his shirt as he thumped the first two feet to the forest floor, but his heart was spinning. You're alive, said Max. He threw his arms around Fred's legs and tried to bite his knee in celebration. We were just thinking you, we were going to eat you. Try not to sound so disappointed, said Fred, grinning. Con reached the lowest branch of the tree. She hesitated, ready for the jump. Leela held out a hand, but Con ignored it and thumped to the forest floor. We made a discovery, she said grandly. Really? What is it? Food? asked Leela. Wait and see. Let's get to the clearing first, said Con. Then, as if a valve had been released inside her, she let out a cough. That was half laughter and half triumph. I've never actually climbed a tree before. Never, said Leela. Then that was actually quite amazing. I know, I think so too, said Con. As soon as they reached the den, Fred pulled off his shirt and scraped off the honey in piles on wild, le wild leaves. He crossed up to the pool and splashed water on his chest and shirt. Bark and dust had struck to, stuck to the honey and made a surpri surprisingly tenacious paste. Hurry up, Fred, called Max. Fred gave up and pulled his sticky, sh pulled his sticky shirt back on, then ran back to the den. Leela was turning the tobacco pouch over with careful hands. Baker was hanging around her throat like a necklace, sniffing her collarbone. It's red, said Leela. Tobacco pouches are usually brown. So, asked Con. Leela leant forward, her eyes shining. Bees can't see the colour red, they see it as black. What if someone wanted the bees to protect the pouch from other animals? The bees can't see it, it's not just part of the tree, so they would have, wouldn't have been suspicious. To fee bees feel suspicious, said Con sceptically. Leela flushed, it's just an idea, but Mama says in the jungle you should avoid red. It's a poison colour, whoever owned this would have counted on counted on that. They must have been planning to come back for it. Fred felt like an, felt an electric shiver pass over his skin. There's more. Keep looking. <gasps> a map. Leela unfolded the paper on a wide flat. And what's the X? We couldn't see, said Con. It was too far. Maybe treasure. Maybe a secret tribe. Cannibals, said Max. Don't, said Con. Or maybe he didn't know what it was. Maybe it's just where he was going, said Fred. I wonder if he knew. Max laid one small hand over Fred's mouth. I'm hungry. Are we going to eat the honey now? The honey worked on them like medicine. Leela sat up straighter. Colour came into Con's cheek and the taste of honey was absolutely astonishing. Sweet and earthy and wild. 
It made Fred want to turn back flips, turn back flips across the jungle floor. It was a taste rich enough and deep enough to make them forget just for half an hour about the map. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Obviously, that was a nice long chapter and there were lots of exciting um, ideas that have come through now. So maybe they might look about where the map is going to take them and um, maybe future in the chapters. So find out tomorrow. Tomorrow's chapter is on con is the name of the chapter. So it's obviously going to be something about con.